In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Pixel Film Studio's FCPX Surface Tracker to do awesome things like this. So as mentioned, the Pixel Film Studio Surface Tracker is an awesome tool, an awesome plugin for Final Cut Pro 10, and it's super easy to use. So you see my hand right here. I'm going to place the 9to5 Google logo on top of my hand because 9to5 Google just recently hit 100,000 subscribers. So I thought it would be neat if we composited the 9to5 Google logo right there on my hand. And that gives me a great opportunity to showcase the Final Cut Pro 10 Surface Tracker plugin from Pixel Film Studio. So all we do is drag the effect from the effects browser and place it on top of our footage just like that. And now in the inspector, you're gonna see the Final Cut Pro 10 Surface Tracker here. So if you've ever used Pixel Film Studio's plugins before, it's gonna be very familiar. You just click where it says open editor and there you have the editing interface. So like I said, super familiar interface. If you've ever used a Pixel Film Studios plugin, you can zoom in and zoom out. You can pan around using these handy on-screen controls just like that. You can also move the playhead if you want to, and that will place you in the point on the timeline just like that. So you have the option of choosing a single layer track mode or a multi-layer track mode. We're gonna choose single layer because this track isn't gonna be that complex but you can have multiple layers of tracking if you wanna do so. Now there are a variety of ways to place tracking points on your footage. You can just simply click with the pen tool to manually place tracking points. And this will track your footage based on contrast. So these tracking points will lock on to your footage based on that. So that's the manual way to insert tracking points, but you can also simply click and drag to create a square with all the tracking points placed inside that square. And that is really cool. So that's a quick and easy way to get tracking points right there on your footage. Now, the great thing is you can go in and delete individual tracking points. So you just click one, hit the delete key, and that disappears just like that. So obviously in this scene, I'm, I'm tracking the top of my hand. So I wanna make sure that the tracking points are on the top of my hand. Now, here's another thing to keep in mind. We're gonna go ahead and reset. You can also change the point distance. So you can set the amount of pixels between each tracking point. So for more complex scenes, you may wanna have denser point distance, but for simpler scenes like this, you can have greater point distance. The great thing is that you can easily play around with it and see what works best for your particular scene. All right, so I wanna show you another using the oval tool. So just click and drag. And I think the oval tool is actually pretty good for this particular scene with my hand. So I'm just gonna drag it like that, perfect. So obviously now I need to delete some tracking points because they're way out there. The cool thing is though, you can use the selection tool to select multiple points to get rid of, just like that. So instead of going in individually deleting one by one, you can just select a group and remove those points. So we just got a few more to remove here. So we'll get rid of that one, get rid of this one. Get rid of this one. I think that looks pretty good. What about you guys? So the next step is to actually initiate the track. But before that, we wanna add some contrast to our scene. And this will allow the tracking points to lock in on the contrast in the scene. So we just click track assist filter and bump up the contrast so you can see it's gonna be easier for those tracking points to identify changes in contrast and lock on. So we're just gonna track forward and you can see those points move along with my hand. So as you can see, this tool is great for tracking 3D dynamic surfaces. So the objects that you eventually composite are gonna be able to respond to the changes in the surface and warp accordingly. It's gonna look really neat once we're finished. So what we need to do now is select the first keyframe. You can actually zoom in there on the timeline to identify that and then track backwards. And that allows you to complete the track for all the frames for this particular clip. All right, so we're done. So we can disable the track assist filter. And there are other pre-track controls that you can use and finesse to your liking. There are, of course, post-tracking controls to smooth track data. Next, you wanna make sure a frame is selected that is flat and even, as you can see here, and then click where it says auto triangulate mesh. 
And that's going to create basically what I like to think of as sort of like a fabric based on the tracking points that you've laid down. Now this mesh looks great, but you can go in and curate the mesh at any time if you notice any problems when you auto triangulate. But in this case, the mesh looks pretty good. So we're gonna zoom back out and now we'll stabilize the mesh based on this frame by clicking where it says apply mesh on this frame. So again, you wanna choose a frame where your points are even and nicely laid out. You can also enable motion blur if you have a fast moving scene, but in my case, we're good. So we're gonna click where it says export data. And I've sped this up just a little bit. All right, so we're exporting. It's gonna dump all that data back to the timeline and you should see the drop zone just like that. So now it's just a matter of adding a clip to that drop zone. So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll go over here and select a source clip, nine to five Google logo, click apply. So now we'll go in and edit the source clip properties so we can see it. So obviously the first thing we wanna do is scale it down because it's way too big right now. So we'll scale that all the way down to about 12.5. And now we also wanna rotate because the clock is upside down. So we'll go ahead and rotate just like that. And then we can pan on the X and Y axis to get it just right. That looks great. All right. So now let's play it back and see what it looks like. You can see it warping as I move my hand. That looks awesome. But there is one thing I definitely wanna change and that is reducing the opacity. So it looks a little more natural, like it's just blending in to my hand. Cause right now it looks like it's sort of floating on top of my hand. But now if we reduce the opacity, so we're gonna drop it from 100% down to like 70%, somewhere around there. Let's just do 70. That looks a lot more natural. So let's go ahead and play that back now. Yeah, that, that definitely looks a lot better. But you see how easy that is and notice how it warps as I move my hand. Of course it tracks along with my hand, but it also warps along because of that 3D mesh. So the great thing is you can go in there, finesse this thing, get it perfect just how you want it and make it look exactly how you want it to look. But I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Just a few minutes we were able to pull something like this off. And remember, you can do this on any textured 3D surface. It's pretty amazing. Now here's another tip. You can use a title as an adjustment layer and create the same effect. But the, the nice thing about this method is that you can compound that adjustment layer and add blend modes. So that really ups the customization level. So let me go ahead and just quickly step through setting up a similar clip using the adjustment layer. So we're just gonna run through this real quick. Notice how fast I'm doing this here, tracking, exporting. And now we're gonna add the clip using the drop zone, make our adjustments and there we go using the adjustment layer. And now we can actually compound that adjustment layer with another clip if we want to, and then change blend modes. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at the FCPX Surface Tracker from Pixel Film Studios, an awesome, awesome plugin and super easy to use for tracking objects on any surface in Final Cut Pro 10. Use code 9to5pixel today to get 30% off the FCPX Auto Tracker. Special thanks to Pixel Film Studios for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube.